Ladies and gentlemen, I have the pleasure of announcing to you that we are going to make an effort to repeat the old rebel yell. One, two, Firearms Museum at the Buffalo Bill Center of the West. Buffalo Bill Center of the West is actually almost 100 years old. They started in 1917, after the same year of Buffalo Bill's death, and so it was built basically to honor him. He founded the town of Cody, Wyoming. And the Firearms Museum got a little bit of a later start. We got our start as the Winchester Arms Museum in 1975, when the Olin Corporation loaned the Winchester Arms Collection. They gave us that collection in 88, and uh, we opened up our own museum called the Cody Firearms Museum in 1991, and we have about 7,000 firearms now and more than 20,000 firearms-related artifacts. <laughs> this is Cassie Waters' Hopkins and Allen's. Um, it's an XL3 double-action uh, revolver, gold-plated mother of pearl grips. Cassie Waters moved to Cody, Wyoming in 1901 with her father. She got married. Her husband died, so what do you do next? You open a brothel. <laughs> so Cassie's was the second madam in Cody. She was probably one of the most respected businesswomen in Cody. And we know that this gun was given to her by either a doctor or a politician. And it's great because it says on the grips, it says, To my friend Cassie, every inch a lady. So tell me a little bit about your background. You said you have a military, more military background? Yes, I actually, um, so I didn't grow up around guns. And when I was a kid, I wanted to be a doctor. My whole life I wanted to be a doctor. I was always interested in history, but I never really put two and two together that people worked in museums and historical sites. And so when I was a freshman in college, I went on a Civil War medicine tour in Gettysburg. And they were talking about how the advancements of weapons technology altered how medical technology functioned on the battlefield. And I thought that was uh, pretty interesting. And so I actually changed my major from, from um, psychology into history. And uh, my mom, who was a physics teacher, told me I better have a job when I finish. And so I worked really hard to make sure I did. But I, um, I actually started studying historical ballistics. And I got an internship at a museum in Pittsburgh called the Soldiers and Sailors Museum. And there was a gun that a Civil War soldier had carved every battle he fought in into the stock. And that was kind of my, like, whoa moment, you know. And I realized that there was a lot more going on with firearms than just the technology behind them. And so I started studying everything I could. I learned to shoot. Um, I learned to shoot modern guns, historic guns. Um, started learning how to you know, take the guns apart and work with them and started studying the history and doing everything I could to learn. Did a lot of internships, ended up at an internship at the Smithsonian's Firearms Collection and then like a bad penny stayed around for three years um, and started working out here. And so I, I'm really fascinated by the technology but then also by you know, the history and the people that own the guns and use them and how the companies work together and sometimes not so well you know, to develop the guns that we have that are you know, iconic uh, throughout history. Over here is kind of, is the large gun fan. It's become iconic with the Cody Firearms Museum. Now we call it a selection of guns of the Old West because obviously there um, are not firearms represented in here. But of course we've got the monster guns, the Hawken rifles, the large bore single shot muzzle loaders. And it's great to see so many Hawken rifles in one place, this intact, because they were used so much by the mountain men. This, this is what got me involved in the firearm business. Yeah? I wanted a Hawken rifle. I got a blueprint from the from the Hawken shop mm -hmm. in St. Louis before there were kits or you yeah. Know, you could buy a lock. Yeah. But most mostly you bought parts that were cast. Mm -hmm. And you take a little file and you finish them. They were just castings. Um, and what's your favorite piece in the museum? Oh, that's a question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, oh well, it 
depends on the day. Um, but probably my favorite piece would actually be the Colt 1861 Navy serial number one. And the reason behind that was actually it was one of the first uh, guns that I worked on as an intern like five years ago. <laughs> this is it, Colt Model 1861 Navy serial number one. And we know it was made on April 9th, 1861. And if you can see better images, the, the serial numbers all corresponding. And what's neat about this, not only is it the first of, you know, hundreds of thousands of Colt navies that were made, it, um, and it's actually one of a hundred that has a fluted cylinder instead of the uh, Texas naval scene that you always see on their firearms. We know who it belonged to, and you don't get that very often in military history. And it didn't belong to a, you know, general or anyone. It belonged to a private out of a New York Yonkers regiment named Caleb Slate. And this is his original holster. So... We know that Caleb enlisted in the military, I want to say like May, I'm going to look it up because I'm going to say the wrong date, May 21st. So we know he enlisted in the military May 21st, 1861. We know this gun was made on April 9th. So we know at some point he walked into a gun store and got the gun of a lifetime. What's one of your most popular pieces that people come in to see? Oh man, uh, one of our most popular pieces, you know of course we've got guns that are associated with really famous people, but probably the most popular gun that we have is the trap gun, that watermelon patch gun as we call it in the museum. And that's because they, it's kind of one of those weird, big curios that they don't, they haven't seen it before, you know, and a lot of our visitors actually, you know, never have an experience with the firearm before they come into the museum. And so that kind of sticks in their memory and we get lots of people asking about it um, and just, you know, where it was made and, and why it looks like that. And I I usually find that while you have really famous people associated with guns, uh, a lot of people want to see the weird looking stuff. Yeah. And so that's kind of one of those cases. This was the gun that they found leaning up against the tree, a juniper tree in the Great Basin National Park in Nevada. And they actually brought it to us to do the conservation work. Uh, the wood was flaking off really bad. And so they wanted to stabilize the firearm. And so they brought it to our conservator in the spring of this year. And the, the most fun that I think we, we've had working on a firearm was the fact that the action's frozen. So we couldn't check to see if it was loaded. There's a wooden dowel test that you can do where you put the wooden rod down and you measure you know, the distance of the barrel from the breech uh, with, the, with, the, with the wooden rod. And there was some type of discrepancy. So we wanted to make sure we were totally safe. So we literally, we took this rifle, we put it in its case, and we walked across the street to the hospital and we got an x-ray, mm -hmm. uh, patient name rifle. <laughs> and we took an x-ray of the actual um, action and we didn't see anything um, other than like organic matter that had built up in the barrel. But what we didn't do was we didn't take an x-ray of the whole gun. And um, you could see right at the edge on the stock, it looked like a cartridge. And um, so we packed it back up, walked across the street, got an x-ray again. And we actually found this Remington, or not Remington, uh, UMC 44 Winchester Center Fire cartridge. And um, it was found in the, it was from the, the trap in the butt plate. And it was sitting up there, and you can actually see it on the x-ray over there. And so with penetrating oil, we were actually able to um, open the door and extract the cartridge. And the gun itself was uh, made in 1882. We know that uh, based off the serial number. And the cartridge was a little bit harder to date, and so we've got a much larger date range, 1887 and 1911. So we know the longest the gun could have been out there was 1887. So this is Buffalo Bill's Winchester Model 1873 that he used, um, it's a smooth bore 73, that he used um, in the arena during Buffalo Bill's Wild West. And if you see, he actually muddled the front sight because he was shooting it like a shotgun, but um, he wanted it to look like the stereotypical Western guns. And so he made sure that he was shooting a lever action 73, the marketed gun that won the West in his Wild West. Very nice. Thank you for letting me hold it. But it's a pretty good gun. This is a Winchester Model 1892, and it is another sm smooth bore gun, and this was used by Annie Oakley in the arena of Buffalo Bill's Wild West. Wow. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, really common for them to um, be shooting with the smooth bore so that it, it um, a lot less dangerous if you're, <laughs> if you're in a tight space out in the arena with the audiences, and so they have a lot of smooth bore guns that they used. And now the 92, of course, is a lighter version of the 86 to 73 um, in, that, in that lineage. But um, part of the reason why she was shooting with, a, with this type of gun was because she was also shooting on horseback and on bicycle, as you can see in wow. some of the advertisements. Somebody stole your rear sight. Um, and what's your like dream piece that you would like to have in the museum? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> um, a dream piece that I would like to see in the museum. I mean, we, we 
cover such a range of eras. But you know, we don't have an Oliver Winchester Winchester. You know, and that and coming from the Winchester Arms collection, you know, we've got a lot of significant prototypes, models, John Olin's guns, but I would love to see an Oliver Winchester Winchester here. This is uh, a Colt Bisley that was given to Audie Murphy by Gary Cooper. Um, it's got um, obviously target sights that were added and a mother of pearl grip that is incredibly, it's really thick. And we're, we've never really seen anything that quite that thick. Uh, Hiram Burdan made this firearm for presentation to President Abraham Lincoln. And we call it the Lincoln Head Hammer Gun. It's a one of a kind gun. And he actually had the hammer made as a bust of Lincoln's face. And um, uh, Hiram Burdan, you know, owed a lot of you know his, his his life and his accomplishments to working with Abraham Lincoln, and so it's kind of a, a fitting presentation for him. But unfortunately, uh, President Lincoln was assassinated before the gun could be given to him. But it is a very uh, interesting firearm. I always call him like the first official fanboy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but people love this gun. It's just great. That's all. Sweet. Thank you. <laughs> by the rain up by the sleep had my head stomped in I'm still on my feet and I'm still willing I've smuggled some smokes and folks from Mexico 